Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online for iOS. This episode is being released on the same day that iOS 8 is being launched across the globe. iOS 8 is Apple's latest operating system for the iPad, the iPhone, and iPod Touch 5th generation. It includes many new features with updates to its built-in apps, new features to allow iOS apps to interact, as well as integration with the yet-to-be-released OS X Yosemite for the Mac. Now, obviously, I will be covering iOS 8 and all the new features in depth over the next month or two, but for today, I wanted to cover the upgrade process for existing iOS devices, take a look at some of the decision points you need to consider both before and during the upgrade process, as well as just a taste of some of the new features of iOS 8. So, with that in mind, let's get started. So in this first section, we're going to take a look at some decision points, whether or not your device is eligible to be upgraded to iOS 8. Uh, do you actually want to upgrade to iOS 8 at this point? And things to do just before you run the upgrade. Now, if you have a brand new iPad or iPhone, I'll actually be covering the full installation and activation process next week. Um, so this week really is looking at the upgrade process and some, uh, some features of iOS 8 uh, as it's brand new. But first off, let's take a look at the eligible devices. So uh, this is a graphic here of the different devices that are currently uh, available to host iOS 8. So as you can see from the iPhone, iPhone 4S, right the way through to the brand new iPhone 6 Plus. For the iPad, iPad 2, iPad 3rd generation, iPad 4th. In fact, most of the iPads, in fact, all of the iPads, except for the original iPad. And of course, we still have the iPod Touch. The fifth generation is the only iPod uh, that will actually host iOS 8 or is compatible with iOS 8. So you've decided that uh, your device is suitable. Uh, do you want to upgrade to iOS 8 at this point? Now there will be a huge influx of new applications and updated applications coming out over the next couple of weeks and they will all be enhanced for iOS 8 and we'll see lots of new features such as the extensions that allow the apps to uh, share information with each other or to uh, uh, swap information with each other. But, uh, I mean, it might be you want to leave it. If your iOS device is super critical to you, you might want to leave it a week or two just to make sure any bugs are sorted out, to make sure that your particular application is released and available on iOS 8. Um, on the beta, I've noticed there's a couple of applications that aren't very stable with iOS 8, and, um, you know, you might want to wait until they are re-released with the full iOS 8 compatible version. But uh, let's throw caution to the wind. Let's go ahead. Let's say um, we are eligible. We do want to upgrade. So how do we actually go about that? Well, the last thing before you do upgrade, though, is to check that you have a valid backup of your device. And we do that through the settings panel on your iPad or iPhone. It might well be that you still connect your iOS device to your Mac or PC and use iTunes, in which case you can back it up uh, to iTunes. Um, I tend these days not really to tether my iOS devices to my Mac, um, I tend to use the iCloud functionality that's built in for backup and synchronization. Now, to check on the current status of your backup and to make sure you have a valid backup or to run a backup, you need to do it through the settings icon. So let me just go in. Uh, we need to go into iCloud. So this is my iPhone 5S. Uh, it's currently still on iOS 7. I'll show you this on the iPhone, although it's exactly the same on the iPad. It's obviously, just the screen looks slightly different. If I go into iCloud, and if I scroll down to the bottom, we see an option for storage and backup. So if I tap on storage and backup, I can see, right, I've got a total storage of five gigabytes. So I'm just using a free plan, a free iCloud plan. I have 4.9 gig available to me. I can manage my storage at this point. If I actually go into manage storage, you'll see I've got um, this phone. I've also got an iPad as well. But let's, uh, I'm using five gig or rather five megabytes of mail. Now I can buy more storage at this point if I want. Apple have recently just uh, updated their storage plans. So you can now buy a lot more iCloud storage at a much more reasonable price. And I have iCloud backup switched on. Um, now the last backup couldn't be completed. When you do switch on iCloud backup, it should automatically back up your camera roll. Uh, and as you can see on screen, your camera roll, your accounts, your documents and settings, when the phone is plugged in, locked and connected to Wi-Fi. So my backups might be a little out of kilter because I've been uh, sort of experimenting, upgrading this to iOS 8 and reverting it. So it might be a little bit confused, but you can see I have no complete backup, saying less backup is never. Hopefully on your machine or your device, you will see the date of the last full backup. Um, if that's fairly recent, you might 
feel comfortable to go ahead and upgrade using uh, that as a backup or rather just having that stored away in iCloud if there are any problems you can restore your machine but uh, I'm going to go ahead and say backup now and uh, let's see if this actually works okay now this particular device uh, has very little data on it because it's a demo machine so it's going to take me less than a minute yours might take considerably longer if you have a lot of data on your iPhone or iPad but I'll just let that continue until we have a valid backup stored in iCloud okay so now we are backed up so in the eventuality that I need to revert back to iOS 7 I can always restore my machine from my iCloud backup just a quick point about reverting back to iOS 7 it's not a straightforward process but there is a way to revert back to iOS 7 that normally only lasts for less than a week you really do need to be confident that you are uh, doing the right thing by upgrading to iOS 8 because it can be very difficult to go back to iOS 7 and eventually impossible after a week or two once iOS 8 has been out but let's say we're okay we've got our backup we're happy to upgrade how do we do that well there are two ways one if you connect your device to iTunes um, iTunes will identify there is a new version of the software available and you can install it that way or you can do it wirelessly and use what's called the over the air software update uh, to do that we need to go into settings and because I'm recording this the day before the iOS 8 general release is out, this won't appear, but just to show you where it will appear, if we go down to uh, general and software update, so iOS 7.1.2 is the current release available on the 16th of September. Tomorrow, uh, which is the 17th of September, you will actually see iOS 8 and a button to go ahead and install. Uh, make sure when you do see that and the button is there and you press it that either you have over 50% battery or your device is connected to a power source. Um, it won't actually let you install until then. Uh, another word of warning, if you do try and update on the day the software is released, be prepared for a long wait. It will be horrendous. Uh, lots and lots of people try to install on launch date and Apple servers, understandably, will grind to a halt. Uh, you might be lucky you might want to leave it for a day or two for the initial enthusiasm to die down and then it's normally very very quick uh, what i'm going to do though is i'm going to come out of here i'm going to install the gm version of ios 8 just so that i don't get the problems tomorrow of trying to download the general release version and we'll quickly run through some of the decision points you need to make when it is upgrading but let me switch over to a video camera so you can see the screen as i go through the upgrade process now at this point i've actually downloaded and installed iOS 8. It's a completely automatic process. Uh, so at the moment, the phone is just going through the initialization uh, series of events. And then once it's finished, it should prompt us to continue the installation. OK, and that's it. So you'll see at the bottom, swipe to upgrade. So if I just do that, I need to enter my passcode. And this is the passcode that uh, was on the machine before it was upgraded. So let me just tap that in. I'm just using one, two, three, four, highly insecure, and it will complain if you try to use that, but uh, just for this demo device. A few more steps to go through. So we get the uh, hello in various languages. Uh, let me just tap on the button at the bottom and we'll swipe across, put in our passcode again. Right, choose the Wi-Fi network. Well, it's uh, seen my local Wi-Fi network, which is fine. It's remembered my credentials as well, so I don't need to uh, do anything there. don't need to re-enter the password. We'll say next. Well, I do need to enter my iCloud password in. And if we've done that correctly, we'll tap next. And it should set us up with our Apple ID. Updating iCloud settings. During the upgrade process from iOS 7, you will be prompted to upgrade to iCloud Drive. And this is a decision point. You can either upgrade to iCloud Drive or you can say not now and upgrade later. The main reason that you might want to leave upgrading to iCloud Drive to a later time is that until we get OS 10 Yosemite, uh, any documents that you put in iCloud Drive won't be accessible by those particular devices. So if you have a Mac and you're quite used to sharing documents using iCloud, you might want to wait and not upgrade to iCloud Drive until later on, as I say, when OS 10 Yosemite is available. Otherwise, you might find that uh, documents that you put in the cloud uh, aren't accessible from your Mac. So I would suggest not now in that instance. 
Um, but if you're not concerned with that, you can upgrade to iCloud Drive at this time. And we're in, so welcome to iPhone. So let's say get started. It takes us through to the home screen with a couple of brand new icons. Let me switch back to my normal capture method so that uh, you'll get a clearer view of what's on the home screen. Now for the final part of this week's show, and as I say, I really want to just mainly to cover the upgrade process in this show. Uh, I just thought I'd just give you a few sort of top level highlights of iOS 8. Uh, there is plenty to cover. So this is most likely going to take us uh, at least well, I would think at least four to six weeks of uh, shows to cover all the features. And a lot of the features in iOS 8 don't really become apparent until we start getting the third-party applications in with the extra integration, the extensibility, and the continuity uh, elements as well. But plenty to keep us occupied uh, in the next month or two. The first brand new app you'll notice on the home screen is the new health application. But you might be disappointed initially because when you actually go into it, it will be empty. It is going to rely on third party applications delivering metrics into the health application. It's basically a container. So the first time that you run it, it's most likely going to be empty. Uh, but it has a dashboard. I will cover this in a lot more detail once we do have some third party apps that are supplying metrics to the health app. But uh, just to give you an idea, there's a dashboard, so daily, weekly, and uh, monthly views of the dashboard. You can have a look at the actual data itself. So this first tab is a dashboard and you can add data to the dashboard. So uh, information about me, well, I haven't set any of these options as of yet, but let's say I wanted to track my sleep and I had an application that was uh, measuring my sleep patterns. It would deliver the information to the health app. I can go in here, I can have a look at it, but I could also show this on the dashboard as well. So when I go to the dashboard, I can see my sleep analysis based on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly rate. As I say, not much use until we start getting metrics in. When you start installing apps on here that do have integration with the Health app, if you tap on here, you'll see them listed. So we can actually um, sort of manage the permissions of the various data sources from this screen. One thing you can do straight off the bat, though, is to create what's called the medical ID. Uh, this is new in that it allows emergency personnel to access your medical information, important medical information, uh, directly from the phone without knowing the passcode. And the way you would set that up is if we go into here, uh, let's go ahead and create the medical ID. Uh, I need to add my name, so I'll put my name in. I can add a photo if I want. I leave show when locked switched on so they can get to the information from the lock screen. I can add my birthday, so let's just put a fictitious birthday in. I can enter my medical conditions, some medical notes, uh, allergies and reactions, medications, etc. Add emergency contacts. So I've only got uh, one other person in my contacts list, Fred Flintstone. He can be my uh, manager, say. I can add additional emergency contacts, blood types, organ donors, etc. Now, when I've got all that information, if I just tap done, okay, so there's a quick summary of it. If I actually come out, so let's go back to the home screen. And if I actually switch off the phone and go back, into the lock screen. So someone finding this phone uh, would swipe across. They couldn't get into the phone, but they have got this emergency option here. So I can tap on here, I can tap on medical ID, and there's all the information I've entered in the medical ID within the health app. Okay, so, but we'll just say done to that. Cancel that, and let me use touch ID to actually go back into the phone. Now we will touch on the health app in a lot more detail once we get some uh, health related apps installed on the device. Now, there are some cosmetic changes as well. If we have a look at the control center, you'll see how this new flat uh, view of the control center. Uh, notifications have been improved as well. Um, let's just have a quick look at messages and also the uh, the new keyboard uh, that we have included within iOS 8. If I go into messages, uh, if I want to send a new message, let's say to Fred, I've got Fred Flintstone, I can tap on there. It goes to green because Fred doesn't have iMessage. But to start typing my message, if I just tap in the text message box, you'll see we get the quick type keys across the top. Now these will give you uh, predictive text. So for instance, if I wanted to send a message to Fred saying, when are you available? Uh, rather than typing it all out, I just type W. So there's when, I can tap when. Uh, R, so A, and then there's R. It's come up with you already without me having to type anything. When are you available? A, V. And there is available in the middle. So I just tap that and there's my message and I can just send that. By the way, if you find the keyboard doesn't appear, if we just swipe down, you'll see you'll sometimes get that small bar going across. I just swipe up 
and that will bring the predictive text for you. Um, some other new cool features, let me cancel that, is the way you can send voicemails and uh, video mails as well. So if we just tap the send mail, uh, let's send this to InfiTap the Plus, let's send this to Don McAllister. So he has got iMessage. If I want to send a voicemail, uh, very simple, and you can do this with one hand as well, regardless on the size of your iPhone screen. Uh, we just tap and hold the microphone button. This is a text message, or rather a voice message, going to Don McAllister. And then just swipe up and let go. And that actually sends it straight off. When they receive it, they can actually listen to it uh, on the Mac or on the iOS device. I can also send a video message or take a snapshot using the FaceTime camera. So uh, hopefully this doesn't scare you too much, but if I tap and then go across to here and hold that down, that's now recording. So you can give them a, a nice FaceTime message. And then if you want to send that, I just slide up to here, and let go, and that will actually send it directly across. Now, if I wanted to review that, so let me do another one. Tap and hold, record, and then let go. I can now play that back, or I can delete it tapping the X. If I wanted to send just a snapshot, Tap and hold, up to the camera, let go, position it, let go. It takes an image and sends that off. Let's uh, come back out of messages. Let me just go across to the Mac and we'll reply to one of those messages. Okay, so that's come in already. I can read it from there. If I come to the home screen, let me send another one. There we go, so there's my message. I can just pull down and I can actually reply from the notification itself. Again, I've got my uh, predictive text coming up as well, but we'll just say fine and we'll send that off. Uh, one additional new thing in iOS 8 that we'll touch on this week finally is the addition of contacts information within the task switcher. So if we double tap, because I've been communicating with Don McAllister, you'll see I've got my recent. Uh, people I've been communicating with on the right. I've also got Fred Flintstone. He's one of my favorites. I can communicate with Fred. So if I want to communicate with Don, I can just tap the icon. Now I can message, I can FaceTime, swipe to put that away. Um, also, if by the way, if, uh, if you don't see your favorites, if you swipe across to the right, your favorites will appear. And again, I can tap on Fred and either phone him or message him. If you want to switch that functionality off, by the way, if you don't like having your contacts in the app switcher, uh, you can go to settings. And then within settings, you can go down to uh, mail, contacts, and calendar, and then swipe down again, and we'll get to, here we go, show in app switcher. Now, there are two options. One, your phone favorites. You can remove them from the app switcher and also your recents as well. So just switch those both off, and it will go back to as it was in iOS 7. But um, yeah, it's not doing any harm staying there. You might find you'll start to use those features more than you might expect. And back out to the home screen. Just to finish off, I hope you enjoyed this special episode released to coincide with the launch of iOS 8. Now, I'll be releasing a new in-depth iOS 8 tutorial each and every week, as well as looking at the best iOS apps and exploring how they have been optimized to work with iOS 8. And of course, when OS 10 Yosemite is released in October, I'll also be covering all of its new features, as well as exploring the close integration between iOS 8 and Yosemite. Now, there's never been a better time to become a Screencasts Online member, and you can try it for free with our new 14-day free trial. As well as the new iOS 8 tutorials, your free trial will also give you immediate access to our extensive library of over 500 iOS and Mac video tutorials. So head over to seofree.com to register for your 14-day free trial.